Hello and welcome to this episode of How to Be a Great GM. We're talking about things that make you afraid to GM. It's a complex space, but let me tell you, we mostly all fear the same thing. Things. But first, a word from today's sponsor. DungeonFog.com is the ultimate battle map maker. I use it on a weekly basis. I absolutely adore the props, the maps, all of the things that you can make in it. They've got several thousand props, several thousand room options, design options from fantasy to sci-fi to modern day horror to Victoriana. You name it, they've got it. It is all there. Plus, they have a public library that has over 10,000 maps that you can choose and share and use and change up or just use as they are. It's at your fingertips. Use the code GREATGM to get a discount if you want to sign up for a subscription. But please note, you can use Dungeon Fog without one. DungeonFog.com, making today's episode possible. I did a poll recently across all of our social media channels. Links for all of those are down below. And I was surprised. I said, what makes you afraid of GMing? The responses were, well, phenomenal. We had over 500 people writing in paragraphs of what made them afraid to GM initially or prevent them from GMing now or they still face whilst GMing. It was it was touching to see just how many people had so many fears and phobias that we all seem to have in common. So I've broken them down into several categories. We're going to go through those categories because I think a lot of the time, just a cold, hard dash of truth will help you take away some of your fear. Now, before I even start, I have been running shows for years. I've run them on the biggest platforms and on the tiniest platforms. I still have the majority of these fears. I don't think you would ever want to get rid of these fears. Why? Because they keep you frosty. They make sure that you do your best each time rather than just getting lazy and not trying to improve upon yourself. So I do think having a little fear is useful. The first cluster or first clump, I should say, of fear fears that came through were mainly revolving around our friends. Here were the main, fun, the, the, the main fears. Performing in front of my friends. I'm worried that I'm going to get ridiculed if I put on a strange voice or do an action or a whoosh. Fear of performing in front of friends was a big one. A lot of people were like, well, I want to try accents, but I'm worried that my friends are going to laugh at me and they're going to ridicule me. If that is your friendship group, if they are laughing and they are ridiculing you because you are trying to do something different, get a new group of friends. I cannot emphasize this enough. I spent years being abused by players who were using me as a form of entertainment. And whenever I tried to step out of my comfort zone, whenever I tried to do something different, they would either tell me no or that they didn't like it or that I should stop doing it because I looked stupid. I wasted my role playing life on those people who are now no longer in my space because I learned to take a step and say, you know what? If my friends are judging me for trying to have fun, they're not my friends. Get rid of them. Find new ones. I guarantee you, you will have a happier playing experience. That's the cold hard truth of all of the friendship related things, by the way, is if they are not supporting you, they are not friends. They are using you as a form of entertainment. Move on. Life is too short to not. Okay, sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. I get really upset when we as GMs, as people who are trying to do the right thing, have this rubbish poured out onto us by our players who are expecting us to give them this amazing experience, to just give them everything that all of the other professional GMs out there are doing, beautiful maps and miniatures and touchscreen and lighting, all of that kind of rubbish. I get so frustrated well, what are the players doing for you? Are they arriving with beautiful characters that they've had drawn out, plus an array of touchscreen stuff for you to use? Do they have their own miniatures printed? Some of them might, and those are the good ones. But the ones that arrive and expect you to provide all of that sort of stuff, they are users and abusers, and either they should be paying you for the privilege, or you should be playing with somebody else. Okay, I've said it enough times, I'm going to move on. All right, so the next thing. Disappointing my friends, being a bad GM. There is no such thing as a bad GM. There is a GM who doesn't understand the fundamentals of being a GM. 
But that doesn't mean that they are a bad GM. Unless you are purposefully trying to kill your players' characters and you're trying to be this amazing person and prove that you are better than your fellow players, that's a bad GM. But a GM who is trying, who is creating adventures, who's really putting in the effort, there is no such thing as a bad GM. So disappointing your friends that they're hoping for this amazing experience that someone who has had zero experience in doing... That's like going to a chef who has never cooked something before and saying, well, I expect you to make me a Michelin meal. It's insane. It's insanity. Your friends should not expect that. The way to dissolve this fear, by the way, is simply to say, you know what, guys, this is my first time, so be gentle. And I want feedback. If you are actively engaging your players for feedback and they're not giving you feedback, but they tell you that they're a bad GM, guess what? They're the bad ones. Not you. You are fine. Get rid of them. Move on. And I don't want to hear, by the way, the excuse of, oh, I don't have anyone in my town to play with. We have learned over the last two years that there is an entire planet's worth of people to play with. Get online and play. Don't do not let your friends control your creativity. Th that's insanity. Absolutely insane. And I know for younger people, your friends are everything that you need to, to deal with. I'm taking a break. Okay, so some of the fears and phobias about people with regards to their friends is that they are worried about not letting their friends choose where they want to go, but kind of forcing them where to go because of 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 reasons that that is a definite fear you don't want to force your player characters on where to go and that's why on this channel moving forward all of the videos subsequent to um a few videos ago actually we now talk about focusing on the npc ai and on the the constraints of our game and we focus our role-playing perspective from that rather than from the perspective of planning adventures so we're going to move mentally we're moving away from going okay i have planned out the entire adventure and we're going to move into a space where it is Actually, the NPCs are going to tell me what is happening in that space as well as the PCs. So, so we're going to move, remove the burden of that. And you're going to see we've got a couple other phobias and fears that, that, that prey on that as well. Um, keeping the players engaged. Keeping my players engaged. My players aren't engaged. What do I do? I have been in many sessions where the GM is not engaging the players. This is a social skill that you have to learn. If you can see that your players are no longer engaged, if they're no longer interested, there is nothing wrong with saying guys let's take a five minute break i need to reassess during that break quietly chat to them and say how do they feel the game is going what are the things doing how are things working out for them and listen to their feedback if they say well it's fine but i really wish we had more combat then when you come back from that break you slam straight into a combat throw something in there figure out very very quickly how something could attack them Maybe it's the building that they're in starts collapsing, collapsing because of a nationwide earthquake. It has nothing to do with the adventure, but something is going to cause them to go into a combat-like situation. Ramp it up. I guarantee you, you won't lose their, their, their uh, concentration beyond that. And if they are, if it's one person who's losing concentration, that's on them. It's not on you. That's the other important thing. And then another fear is that there is this player versus uh, GM kind of thing that comes up. And that has to be dealt with uh, in terms of, well, the GM is beating the players. There are a lot of reasons why this can happen. It can be very, very tricky. I did a video a couple of weeks ago, as a matter of fact, on how to, to avoid that space from, from being there. And that's by cheering your players on during combat. When they're rolling high numbers, you should be going, yes, well done, fantastic. And when your, your monster rolls a number and it's a high number, you're going, oh my goodness, guys, this beast, this horrendous monster, it swings its club and it hits this value or it hits your armor class, or it just hits you if you know the values, you are on the player's side. That will prevent you from going down that path of uh, GM versus player. I think that's enough from me for this week on ranting and raving. If you want me to dive into the other fears and phobias that we all have, leave a comment down below. It gets me hot under the collar, as you can see. And I, it's just because I'm so passionate about us being GMs. You should be in a place that you are having fun you shouldn't have these fears being crippling stopping you from playing step forward don't step up step forward and say i want to have fun i'm going to gm for whatever reason and you know what my fears i'm going to try and face them i'm going to try and 
look at them, not overcome them. You are going to have them in perpetuity. But it is a case of saying, I'm going to look at those fears and I'm going to see the strength that each one offers me improving myself, making sure I've got the right friends that support me rather than that use me. All of those kinds of positives can come out of your fear and phobia. At least that's my idea. Your task then is to identify what is your fear about being a GM, whether you are about to start or whether you have been GMing for 30 years. What is your fear? And then if you would, do me the, do me the favor of just writing down below this is my fear and this is the positive that I can find in that fear that I'm going to take home. L write it down in the comments. Let's support each other this time around. Really dive in and say, this is, this is it. You're not alone. We're all in the same boat and this is the positive I'm taking out of it. That's it. All right. I hope you liked this video or at least I hope this video gave you something to think about. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button to show some love. And until next time, my name is Guy and I wish you the very happiest of gaming.